Now today we look at farm matters and managing COVID-19. And uh, with me, joining me on Zoom from Ukraine is uh, Rem Elijah, who is actually uh, going to take us through how her organization has actually helped farmers globally and uh, in Ukraine and the USA in the fight against COVID-19. You're welcome, Elijah. Thank you, Manly. First of all, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me to your show. Um, so the uh, company to tell you a little bit about uh, EOS Data Analytics. So we are a trusted global provider of uh, satellite imagery analytics. We are actually headquartered in the States, but the, um, actually one of our R&D offices in Kiev, Ukraine, that's where we have most of our engineers and scientists. You are, what is the situation of COVID like in Ukraine and uh, in the US? Um, I would say, unfortunately, the situation is like everywhere. Um, it's not going very well. Uh, there are a lot of cases, but uh, we are pleased with how the government is handling the situation. Um, a lot of people are getting vaccinated. Um, I have also gotten my vaccine just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but of course, it has uh, influenced and impacted some businesses uh, across the country. Uh, but uh, in our case, I would say the situation is a bit different. With, uh, Elijah, we would wish to know what EOS Data Analytics uh, does, what do you do, and perhaps how do you work with farmers in Ukraine, in the U.S., and also in Africa? Sure. Um, so when it comes, I would say, to working uh, in Ukraine or in Africa, of course, I mean, if we talk, first of all, talk about Ukraine, Ukraine is a vast agrarian land. We have over 42 million hectares of land. Obviously, we need to help the farmers in the community uh, by providing with innovation technologies. We don't only operate in Ukraine, uh, we op uh, operate worldwide. Uh, but uh, I think that this year, a lot of the focus uh, has been around Africa. Uh, we understand that in Africa, 60% of, uh, of the population uh, is actually into the agricultural sector. But uh, unfortunately, and also surprisingly, uh, very few of the farmers are willing to adapt, uh, to adopt modern precision agricultural practices and technologies into their daily lives. So um, I think the, one of the challenges is always to introduce high technology agricultural solution to farmers because they are not aware on how to implement these digital technologies into their daily lives. So together with our local partners in Africa, we've already um, started and are planning to contribute more to training, um, educating the local uh, local market players, including farmers, uh, agri uh, companies, uh, input supplier, insurance banks, etc., on how we can accelerate the socio-economic well-being of small holding and large-scale farmers in Africa uh, through the satellite farming technologies. Yes, uh, Elijah, uh, the pandemic has taught us that. Uh technology is the way to go that in whatever we are doing that actually technology is the way we, to go for example you're in you're in ukraine and i'm here in kampala but we are having uh, a conversation on uh, a national uh, television so uh to what extent are you have you worked with uh, the farmers especially here in africa and more so uh in uganda so that they can embrace technology as a new measure to cope up with the effects of COVID-19? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so if we talk, I would say, about Africa in general, um, last year we started operating a lot in West Africa. We've partnered up uh, with uh, one of the local partners in Nigeria called AgroExchange Technology. And uh, together the cooperation has um, actually been very fruitful. Uh, we are monitoring over 400,000 hectares in Nigeria, Ghana, Benin Republic. Um, and with the implement implementation of the crop on a train uh, solution, we have realized that uh, we have increased and improved productivity by 30%. And all of that actually is being done using an online platform. 
Uh, now, of course, I can admit that we have achieved this goal, uh, you know, with the help of the local partners. Uh, the same thing, we have also partnered up with another company in Ghana uh, called the Complete Farmer, which is also a demand-driven digital agricultural platform. And uh, with the help of our system, they have actually managed to uh, save up around 40% of their field operations because the platform could be used anywhere. You just have to log in, um, see what is actually happening in the fields. Even if you are in any part of the world, you can log in and understand what is actually happening in the farmers. Uh, when it comes to working in Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, we know that uh, in Uganda we are lacking, of course, at the moment partners because the technology there is not, I would say, uh, that advanced yet. And of course, we are planning to change that with the help of the local partners. Um, at the moment, we are monitoring around uh, 50,000 hectares in Uganda. And if you talk uh, about Africa in total, mm -hmm. we are monitoring around uh, 3 million hectares. Yeah, uh, at times of COVID, we realized that uh, the purchasing power of uh, Uganda, and especially for agricultural products, uh, is actually gone down so much that uh, there is a lot of uh, fluctuation of prices for agricultural uh, products. That we also see that uh, even uh, farmers are counting losses because now the market is not there. So, uh, in terms of technology, how are you going to help uh, the Ugandan farmer so that uh, perhaps they can be able to store uh, their products, so they can be able to add value to their products, so that maybe they can think of exporting them or uh, storing them until such a time when the prices are good for them to sell? Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, when the pandemic started, we were a bit uh, scared that the business was going to slow down, as we have seen across the globe. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, it was the same uh, sort of situation for every other organization out there. However, we've soon realized that it was actually the opposite. We've noticed a higher demand from the market on our solutions, and it keeps on growing. Uh, the platform uh, can be used remotely, so you can still access our services from um, any part of the world. And I think COVID has only made people and companies realize the importance of adapting uh, this kind of technology, uh, considering its convenient use, creating a sense also of urgency in projects implementations. Um, if we also talk about uh, Uganda, I mean, 70% uh, uh, according, 70% uh, of the population, according to recent research, um, is actually also involved in the agricultural sector. However, in Uganda, we also did our own research and also uh, talked to some of the uh, some of our users who are using our platform. Uh, we realized that in Uganda, the situation, unfortunately, um, in terms of agricultural, is not that advanced. So we are talking about poor agricultural practices. We are talking about low technological adoption, poor access to um, extension services, um, poor agronomy practices as well. However, farming productivity would be more profitable for the farmers locally. Um, these challenges, though, are really the same as we have encountered in any other uh, region in Africa that uh, we are operating in. But after establishing successful partnership and projects, we understand that now it's the time for Africa and also for Uganda to invest in this kind of technology. Um, and if you talk about the platform overall, I mean, here we are talking about anything from using different vegetation indices to understand the health of the crop, whether there are any problems, any disease, pests, uh, to understand whether um, there are any sudden heat shock, cold shock affecting the crop. And all of that could be monitored just using the system without actually the need to go out there and see what is actually happening. So again, that saves costs for operational practices. The same case that I explained earlier when we talked about one of our partners in Ghana. Well, uh, uh, Elijah, I, I want us to, you to take us through how your technology has been uh, received in Africa because at times you find that uh, Africans are used to their subsistence. Uh, the majority of Africans mm -hmm. are used to the, the using of the rudimentary tools in terms of uh, agriculture. So how are they uh, accepting the change that look here, uh, this, uh, this technology to embrace? And uh, secondly, how fast are they in terms of learning to use the new technology you are coming with? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so EOSDA believes in the power um, of working with partners because partners and resellers are the one who understand the local challenges of the communities. Mm -hmm. um, if we go out there alone and we start working with farmers, um, I don't think this would be the right approach to do. We need to work with the local vendors who understand what the farmers are after or what the farmers uh, need. Um, and of course, our kind of technology um, is, I would say, very advanced uh, in terms of um, explaining the vegetation indices and all the parameters that we display uh, within the system. But we certainly believe that the local partners will help us better understand the domestic agricultural practices mm -hmm. uh, of the market uh, in Africa and the needs of the farmers. So what the partners are doing, they are taking our technology and they are facilitating um, and uh, making it easier by taking our data, interpreting it in simple words and delivering it to the farmers. Uh, the delivery of information happens through workshops, um, educational lessons, um, and uh, of course they also deliver very simplified reports where the farmer will just uh, like open up the report and sees that, okay, I have a problem in this field. I know that I need, for example, to add um, extra fertilizer in the area in order to boost my field productivity so I can have a higher yield outcome down the line. Um, so if we do it, let's say directly with the farmers, uh, this is not the best approach. That's why we welcome um, any partner or any reseller who's interested to work with EOSDA uh, in Uganda. So we can make sure that we are delivering the right kind of technology uh, to the end users uh, by making sure that the technology is gonna be successful. Uh, because when we actually realized last year when we started partnering up um, a lot and um, expanding, I would say our operations in Africa, uh, we thought that it was gonna take time. We were thought that uh, it was gonna take time in order for the partners to roll out this technology and expand expand our operations there. But I mean, we started with monitoring, for example, with one partner in Nigeria, the one that I mentioned earlier, we started monitoring 100,000 hectares within one year. We've managed to uh, map over 400,000 hectares, and that is only in one country. And uh, we went from um, half a million uh, monitoring of hectares um, up to over 3 million hectares across Africa. So I don't think uh, that um, it is actually difficult to roll out these kind of technologies. There just needs to be an acceptance that now is the time to take this technology and implement it because it's going to facilitate the farmers' uh, lives. It's going to facilitate uh, the agro companies uh, any, anywhere, but say from insurance to agricultural cooperatives, farmer cooperatives, banks, insurance, etc. Well, uh, Arim Elijah, how are you working with the government? Because uh, in most of these African countries, definitely such uh, programs can only succeed if you're working well with the government, especially here in Uganda, uh, the Ministry of uh, Agriculture, responsible for agriculture, the Ministry responsible for science, the Ministry responsible for ICT. So how are you working with them so that uh, you can register uh, much or more success within a short time? Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to working with the government, we only work for them through, again, our partners, because they are the one who understand what the market needs. Mm -hmm. So they can take our data, uh, they can simplify it, they can construct it in a way that it, it appeals to the government, mm -hmm. because the government will take a look at uh, the reporting that the partner, uh, the partners uh, has prepared, uh, have prepared uh, using our technology, um, and then it will make it easier for the government to actually to be sold on the idea. Uh, you know, to uh, take this kind of data and understand that now is the time to invest. Um, however, um, you know, based on um, what we've observed, I would say in the market, the governments uh, are a bit uh, hesitant in terms of implementing. It takes a lot of time uh, to make a decision uh, whether we need, for example, to uh, introduce a crop monitoring platform, whether we need to introduce a technology in order to understand the yield prediction or yield modeling, which is based on historical data. Uh, so we are trying to push uh, their interest, I would say, through the partners, uh, through our local representative, because that would be, again, we believe that this is the best approach, uh, because uh, that way we can adapt our technology so it can also suit the needs um, of, uh, of the farmers in Africa. Because, uh, again, we, considering we operate worldwide, uh, anywhere like from Brazil, Argentina, to Asia, to the Middle East, but in Africa, the situation is a bit different. We are talking about uh, many small hold of farmers, uh, each farmer owning one hectare and less. 
Um, and also a lot of the farmers are located in remote areas uh, where it's difficult actually to go to them and access uh, their kind of data. And also, if we talk about uh, the general situation in Africa, uh, unfortunately, there isn't a lot of information uh, that uh, we can depend on in terms of looking at the historical data. So if you would like, for example, to look at uh, historical yield data, um, what was the kind of crop, for example, that was growing uh, two years ago in this uh, field or in another area, it's difficult to get this kind of data. Um, so with the help of this platform, with the help of satellite technologies, we are actually able to not only provide crop monitoring system, but we are also able to provide the crop classification. For instance, uh, we've operated with the World Bank a couple of years ago in Ukraine where we had to classify the entire country from field level up to country level. So we provided field boundary detection uh, and we also provided the kind of crop that grows in each area. And when what? we talk about this kind of uh, solution here, we are talking about understanding the every single kind of crop that grows in each area. Mm. Uh, this will help governments also understand their import uh, and export strategy. This will also help input supplier. Um, that will also increase uh, yield prediction. We can understand that uh, if, for instance, uh, we are lacking a selective uh, kind of crop, then with the help of this technology, we are able uh, to go out to the remote areas, for instance, and understand that, no, we actually have have that kind of crop in our country, but we didn't have access to that. So that's why I believe by rolling out this kind of technology, it will facilitate not only the lives of the farmers, but also um, all the agricultural companies um, in the in the region and also the governments. But of course, there needs to be, um, I would say, demand. Uh, and also we need the, the help of the NGOs that are operating across Africa, because we have also observed that a lot of the NGOs are actually pushing for, uh, for the farmers and for the countries in Africa to adopt all new technologies related to uh, agricultural. So we also Rima, Rima, if, uh, well. if you can hold on to your point, uh, let's look at uh, your five-year plan for Uganda and uh, in, in general for the continent of Africa. Uh, what is it like that perhaps in five years from now, what is your plan for the farmers uh, in, an, in, in as far as using and adopting your technology is concerned? Mm -hmm. mm. Um, so uh, as you might know and everybody knows, um, nowadays we understand that uh, we need to protect our earth, you know, we need to protect our planet, uh, we need to meet the demand of the growing population, because according to the statistics, uh, the world uh, population is going to reach 50 billion by, uh, well, 30 years from now. And uh, here we already need to think about how we're going to uh, supply or how we're going to uh, supply food to people stable. So this is also one of the growing issues, I would say, one of the things or the motivations that drives people to implement, again, satellite data technologies. Um, and, uh, for example, issues uh, or, let's say, uh, matters related to import and export, um, you know, uh, matters uh, related to poor agricultural practice, all of these things um, actually will, um, will help us, I would say, facilitate everything, but again, through the adoption of this kind of technologies. And as also uh, what I mentioned earlier, one of the key challenges, I would say, in Uganda is the low technological adoption of satellite data. Uh, considering we're only monitoring 50,000 hectares, which is not a lot when you think about how many hectares we are monitoring in other parts, uh, in other parts of Africa. So we understand that uh, we need to provide access, we need to extend our services, we need to go out there and um, educate uh, well, the agricultural world that uh, there is this kind of technology that will facilitate their lives, uh, that uh, we can increase, for example, yield prediction for all the farmers across the country. Uh, but uh, these challenges, though, I mean, are really observed not only in Uganda again, but also again across Africa. So the aim is, first of all, or the key, I would say, is to establish these successful partnerships the partners afterwards will go out there, educate the local farmers through the implementation of workshops, uh, smart farming institutions, as well as becoming actually a hit. Uh, and also um, uh, a lot of our partners Re in, Re Re in Africa. Our, our time, is yes. time is incidentally is not our best uh, ally. 
and uh, you've uh, talked about the low technological levels in Uganda that call for actually mobilization and sensitization of the masses. So how are you going to do, how are you going to sensitize the masses? How are you going to mobilize the masses in Uganda? Of course, and many other African countries so that they can work around the clock to raise their uh, technological levels in terms of uh, working in, ag in the agriculture sector. Remember, agriculture is the backbone of uh, the economy, not only in Uganda, but uh, to many of the African uh, countries, but also uh, majority of Ugandans and as the, as the majority of Africans are in one way or the other engaged in agriculture. Mm -hmm. mm. I would say for Uganda, there is a huge potential to generate more wealth uh, by engaging in the export of processed agricultural commodities mm. um, and simple uh, manufactured goods to the region. Mm. And this is not only applicable to Uganda, but also to the neighboring countries. Mm. Um, so we need to uh, spread the word, right? Uh, we need to generate publicity. We need to educate the population, let's say in Uganda, that uh, there is this kind of technology uh, that will make their lives easier. Um, that will allow them to monitor their fields, that will allow them to send notifications if there are any problems, any anomalies in their field, so they can um, attend to their field in a timely manner uh, in order to avoid uh, problems in the future. For example, here we could talk about uh, removing wheat. I mean, a simple practice of removing wheat uh, before a uh, crop emerges is going to actually increase yield uh, by at least 20 to 30%. And this kind of uh, practices actually could be observed just using the platform as it is. Uh, but of course, we need to generate publicity. We need to go out there um, either through the help of the partners, through the help of the NGOs, uh, through the farmer cooperatives concerned. They have access to all the farmers across the country. So uh, I think PR in this scenario, uh, conducting these workshops, um, conducting, you know, these kind of interviews as well. Uh, this is the thing that's going to um, help uh, the farmers, I would say, realize that uh, there are tools out there and that now is the time to actually invest in these tools or uh, to adopt these tools uh, in order to um, help their lives. Well, uh, I can see really, of course, uh, time is not our best ally. In, uh, in one minute, your parting shot to the viewer and uh, your word, your last word to the farmer in Uganda who is actually now anxious to working with you uh, in to, to using your technology so that they can better their production. Uh, could you please repeat the last part? I think the connection yeah, is not at its best. Your you, you word, your last word, uh, the word of hope to the farmer who is viewing this uh, program on how they can use your technology to better their production. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, I think, uh, well, for the farmers, first of all, it's very important to understand that one of the key growth drivers uh, to boost their field, to boost their yield prediction, is to adopt uh, smart farming technologies in order to take it to the next level. Mm. Um, our goal is to continually draw attention to the main challenges that the farmers are facing and answer how Tech Boost will stimulate the production outputs. Um, so if, uh, of course, some farmers might be hesitant to adopt these kind of technologies, but uh, rest assured that we have uh, all the, you will have all the support that you will need. You will have all the educational programs, um, all the information that you need in order to make sure that you can easily and successfully implement this kind of technology uh, you know, to, to solve the problems that you are facing. So I think uh, with a bit of support from our side and with a bit of support from the local uh, partners and the local vendors, we'll be able to realize and it will also help farmers realize that now is the time to adopt uh, satellite data technologies. Well, Emma, thank you very much. Uh... Rim Elijah, the Vice President of uh, EOS uh, Data Analytics, uh, for taking time off your busy schedule uh, all the way from uh, Ukraine, joining us on Zoom, really to share this very, very uh, pertinent information with the farmers here in Uganda. And uh, I believe, of course, uh, every other time, once in a while, we shall always uh, engage you so that you can give as much information to the farmers so that we can better our production in uh, Uganda and also better 
household incomes. Amande Akol Amazima saying bye-bye.